Oh, thank you again for being in the house tonight as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord in song and also to look into his word and spend a few moments in prayer. Thankful that you're here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, tonight we look into the hills, Lord, where our help comes from. Our help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. And so, Lord, being the great God that you are that never sleeps nor slumbers, do not allow our foot to be moved. Be our keeper, be our shade on your right hand. Protect us, Lord, from evil and the evil one. Keep our life, O oh Lord. Lord, from our going out and our coming in from this time forth and forevermore, may we know you and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for this evening, allowing us, Lord, to gather together in this way and we ask, Lord, that you would bless our service with your spirit. And God, we are mindful of many upon our hearts and minds that are struggling tonight that need a touch from heaven. We lift them up to you, Lord, asking for your grace and mercy to be multiplied upon their homes, on their head, Lord, to bring healing and strength and courage and comfort in all situations. We trust you with our loved ones as we trust you with our souls. And we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And all of his children said tonight, amen. Let's worship in song. Brandon, if you will. Good evening. If you would please stand. Our hymn for tonight will be 429, Sweet Hour of Prayer. We'll sing all three verses of it. up on that first verse there. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer.
Well, tonight I invite you in your copy of God's Word to turn with me into the sixth chapter of the prophet Daniel, Daniel chapter 6. And uh, I think this is our maybe our fourth uh, Wednesday night, uh, third or fourth, that we've had some devotion, so to speak, out of the book of Daniel as we've been thinking about remaining faithful while in a foreign land because that certainly describes the life of Daniel and others like we looked at, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And tonight, we look at remaining faithful in your prayer life. We come to this chapter in a story in God's Word that many of us have known since we were young in church and in Sunday school or vacation Bible school, and that is Daniel and the lion's den, or in the lion's den. And when you do not allow familiarity to rob you of its wonder, it, it's still an amazing story, isn't it? It's still such an amazing story that speaks to us of the faithful life that we find in the person of Daniel. And we've looked at that. What an amazing life Daniel lived. It's one thing to remain faithful to God. Uh, most don't do it well even when in comfort and peace. But it is another thing to be faithful while facing hostility and opposition and in a foreign land surrounded by pagan people, people that don't know or believe in your God. Certainly added to the challenge for Daniel and others to remain faithful to God as they were serving these pagan kings in a pagan land. For Daniel, being faithful to God was his first and foremost obligation. And it should be the same for everyone who knew, knows the Lord and who has their names engraved in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? Such should describe all of us who have been saved and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our fruitfulness in life for God depends upon our faithfulness to God. Let me say that again. Our fruitfulness for God depends upon our faithfulness to God. And our prayer lives as Christians are of the utmost importance. Satan doesn't fear uh, prayerless Christians, does he? He doesn't. He doesn't fear prayerless Christians. But the last thing that Satan wants to see is Christians humbly, honestly, sincerely, and fervently praying. That he does not like. And that, we would say, that he fears the most is when Christians are serious about prayer and their prayer life. As Christians traveling through this world, our prayer life is as important as any other act that we do in the Lord's name. Tonight we read Daniel chapter 6. And we see Daniel was a good and a faithful servant, not only to God, but Daniel was a good and faithful servant even to pagan kings while he was a slave in a foreign land. But he was faithful to God above all, and his prayer life played a vital part in his relationship with God. And so Daniel wouldn't allow anything to take that prayer life away. And so I begin reading in the sixth chapter of Daniel in verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 100 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three high officials, of whom Daniel was one, to whom these satraps should give account, so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps, because of an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Wow, what an amazing thought. And then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Again, what an amazing thing to be able to say about a man. These, then these men said, We shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. We've seen a familiar theme in the life of Daniel. 
And as we've quickly mentioned that tonight and over the last few weeks, one of those themes is, is that he was a good and faithful servant, earning favor with the kings in which he served. It should be really said of every Christian that we are good workers, I think. Wouldn't you agree with that? Christians should be known as good workers, that we should be honest people, hardworking people, people of honor. We should be faithful to the people that God has placed in our lives. It is no accident that we are where we are in life. And therefore, we must always redeem the time and redeem the places in which we live, in which we work. And we should be earning the respect of others through our good work and work ethic. Again, even the law should have nothing bad to say about us except in our faithfulness to our God. That should be said of each Christian. Daniel's jealous enemies uh, could find no open sin or error, as they said, in Daniel's life to give them a foothold in which to destroy him. And so they had to create a complaint in connection with his faith and religious practices. And so let's continue reading, picking up in verse 6 and read through verse 15. Then these high officials and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the high officials of the kingdom and prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any god or man for 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, established the injunction and signed the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chambers open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. This was his practice, in other words. Verse 11. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. Then they came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, O king! Did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and the Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king established may be changed. Hmm. Darius was used. Darius, even as king, was used as these enemies of Daniel played upon the king's power, played upon the king's pride to deceive him. In other words, they came together and they, a word I know that some use, they smoothed the king to accomplish their wicked plans. When Daniel knew that King Darius had signed the document, what did Daniel do? He went home and he got on his knees with the window open facing Jerusalem and he prayed, as was his custom, it says. And he did not only do it once, but he simply did what he always did three times that day. And you know, when we see this scripture, I don't think that Daniel continued to pray 
blatantly to go against King Darius's decree with a prideful spirit. I don't get that picture at all with Daniel. I don't think that he had a defiant spirit and was putting on a show for others to notice him or to notice his faith and prayer life. I think it is simply what the scripture says, as he had done previously. I see a very humble and trusting faith from Daniel. And I think it was simply a decision that he had to make in his life of faith not to allow kings or enemies or decrees or injunctions to dictate his faith and prayer life. He was going to be faithful to pray to God no matter what that meant. Let's be honest. In our culture, even as worldly as it is, no one is going to be signing a decree that an individual can't pray in their home tonight. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Uh, we do not have a, a den literally filled with lions awaiting us if we pray in our home. We can pray in our home uh, here in, in our state and in our nation for now. We can pray in our home uh, with freedom. However, Think about this. Even though there's not going to be an injunction or decree signed by a political leader that we cannot pray in our home tonight, and even though there is not a literal den of lions awaiting us if we do so, we do allow other things to keep us from having a rich and robust prayer life, don't we? It won't be a king's lawful decree that stops us from practicing our personal faith and prayer, but we can allow other passions, other pleasures that take our time and keep us from being prayerful and close to our Lord and Savior. My point is, we don't have to have a decree to keep us from praying. There doesn't have to be a den of lines to keep us from praying. We do well with that on our own. We must ask ourselves, what do we allow in our lives that keep us from spending time in prayer with our Lord? This question must be asked. What do I allow in my life that keeps me from spending time with prayer to my Lord? For Daniel to pray meant that he had a den filled with lions awaiting him. That's what it meant for him to pray that day. But what are we willing to lose if we remain faithful to pray? Will we resolve to let nothing keep us from spending ample time in prayer with our God? The truth is, for many, again, they, we don't need a decree to keep us from being serious about our prayer life because we're already allowing other events or other distractions or other toys, so to speak, to keep us from seriously praying now. Daniel was willing to die for his prayer life. Daniel was willing to die from his prayer life. And so we must ask ourselves, what are we willing to do to have a healthy prayer life? What are you willing to give up and sacrifice so that you can spend time in meaningful prayer with God? Well, let's go on and read the rest of this story, picking up in verse 16 and reading all the way through verse 28. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The, the king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. And then the king went into his palace and spent the night fasting, no diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then at break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O king, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? And then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths, and they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him. 
And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no, no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions, they, their children, and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed. And his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Vance Havner once said this, Christians do not have to live. They have only to be faithful to Jesus, not only until death, but unto death if necessary. We saw Daniel willing to die unto death if necessary for his faith, but God rescued him. But Daniel was willing to die for his faith and in being faithful to God in which he placed that faith in. However, God saw fit to rescue Daniel that night so that Darius and others could see the glory of God while Daniel was certainly a slave in a foreign land. When we choose to remain faithful, no matter the cost, the watching world will also either see one, our faith and faithfulness to our God in death, or they will see God's deliverance, but let them see both. Both are important for a lost and a watching world to see. They need to see us being willing, if it costs to die, to be faithful to God. Some might say that they are willing to die for their faith. I've heard that a lot and that's easy to say when you live in freedom by the way but are we willing to live for our faith and that's what many aren't willing to do they'll say they're willing to die for faith but they're not willing to live each day for their faith calling out to God in prayer praying in our home really to be honest with you seems like such a small matter a, a, a private matter if you will however let me remind you of this Faithfulness to God sees no difference between small things or things we consider to be small and things we consider to be great. They're all just duties of our faith. It just sees our God, faithfulness does. Faithfulness sees our God and our willingness to not allow anyone or anything to come between us and our relationship with our Lord. William Steele said this, it is impossible to be faithful to Jesus Christ and not incur the opposition of the world. That's true. When we're faithful, we will incur opposition at some levels and in some ways. Again, I remind us, we're not gonna see a decree passed tonight that will prohibit us from praying to God in our home when we go home in a little bit. But there are an ample amount of tricks from the enemy that are there to cause us to stumble and to keep us from being faithful and prayerful. And so tonight, as we look into God's word and allow his spirit to speak to us, I would ask that myself and all of us resolve that we will not be deceived and allow other influences or distractions or the noise of this world to keep us from praying and to keep us from being faithful to the God that has been so faithful to us, even while we as Christians for now live in a foreign land. Beloved, protect your prayer life.
Protect your prayer life. It is valuable. It's important. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you, O God, that you are a God listening now. You hear and you answer. We thank you, Lord, for how you worked in Daniel's life and how his testimony still speaks and rings loudly for us to feast upon tonight. Lord, we thank you for also the faithful lives of many who have lost their lives for their faith. There are some tonight, Lord, in places throughout this world that are having to gather in secrecy and not pray in the open. And God, there are some in danger because of their faith in you. We lift them up to you, Lord, asking for your watchful eye and your hand of protection to be upon them. And God, that you would use their lives to glorify you and to draw others into the throne of grace and mercy. Help us, O oh God, and give us wisdom and strength, Lord, to do what Daniel did, and that is be willing to protect our prayer life. Help us, O oh God, to not allow the stumbling blocks of this life to hinder us from speaking to you, from loving you, worshiping you, trusting you. We thank you, Lord, for the sweet hours of prayer. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, for those of you online, thank you for joining us tonight. We're so appreciative of you taking time to look into God's Word for us. We pray that you have a blessed rest of your week. If you're able physically, if at all, to come be with us in-house, we'd love to see you here Sunday mornings, uh, Sunday school at 10. We have a class for everyone in worship at 11 o'clock. If you cannot be here, uh, we do provide a Lord willing online Sunday school class taught by Brother Larry Gergen. And also, uh, again, Lord willing, if all goes well, we'll be on Facebook Live at 11 o'clock also. Our Sunday evening service in-house is at 6.30. We do not stream live on that. But may God bless you. Bye-bye.